Good morning, Raymond. Where are you off to, James? Oh, well, I've got to go to my lawyer. Well, uh, what about breakfast? I've already had mine. Are you going to work on the house? Uh, well, later. Later. Okay. See you later. You know, I'd like to tell you they'd be here today. I can't guarantee that. This is the 6th of October, and uh, they said that they, they send them at the end of September. Well, then they'll be here. According to uh, the Freedom of Information Act, uh, when you apply for documents, you're supposed to get them within uh, 30 days. That's the law, and uh, we started applying over nine months ago. We're getting them. I mean, that's the important thing. You're a good lawyer, Harvey. You're the only one who's ever done anything for me, but... Uh, I'm tired. I'm running out of patience. The papers will be here, James. Tomorrow. The next day. I mean, today, maybe. You gotta keep yourself busy. Don't think about it. No, well, that's all that I have been thinking about for the past uh, 16 years. Thinking about what happened and trying to find out the truth. I'll give you a call when the mail comes, okay? Well, I'll, I'll wait, I'll wait. Oh, no, you're not going to hang around here driving me crazy. Come on. You go do something? I'll call you. We're going to find out what the Army did to you, James. And we're going to find out soon. James was in the Army in Orléans, France, when it began. Doing what many young men were doing then, getting military service over with so they could get on with their lives. It was March, 1961. You coming or going? A little of both, my man, a little of both. You're late for work. Well, breakfast took a little longer than I expected. It's the only way to start the day. I got a new Ahmad Jamal album. My brother sent it to me. Do you? Listen to it anytime you want. Oh, that's nice. Nice. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, his music will fall on happy ears, my friend. Happy ears. Good morning, Lieutenant. You're late. Well, uh, as the poet said, uh, better late than never. I'm not going to put up with it anymore. Do you hear me, Thornwell? Well, we all have our cross to bear, Lieutenant. You've been late too often. I've had it with you, Thornwell. I'm working, Lieutenant. Now, do you want me to stop for a scolding? I want you to start acting like a soldier. I act like I'm treated. You're not the first, you know. Means got busted, too. Yeah, well, what she bust is my butt. You know, they can keep their money. It's mostly that jerk Graham. He's the one who busted you. When he takes over, old star. It's gonna be like working in an outhouse. Are you talking about a one hole or two? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I put in for half a dozen schools back in the States. Each one of them had something useful to teach. I end up doing this crap. We're all doing it. Better than humping a rifle. I had a skill in mind. With a chosen few. Yeah, too few. Why don't they get some people to work with us? because there just aren't that many geniuses around. Just us. <laughs> My grandmother used to tell me to learn to live with what I couldn't change and to fight like hell to change what could be changed and to know the difference between the two. Vive la différence. <laughs> <laughs> Get for vous, get for moi. It means you can barely count in English. You better leave French alone, eh? Message center. Okay, thanks. Here we go. Is that our man? Yep. My 
I'd get a little fizz on this, all right? Give him a tap. tap, tap. Okay, I got it. You're about as tidy as they come. Well, man. came 40 feet to the tube. <laughs> You. Well, wonder no more. Hey, I brought a little something for you. You're feeling full of it tonight, James. I'm feeling pretty good. I have to admit that. There's a lady looking for you. She'll find me if she's interested. Oh, she's interested. <laughs> you should think about staying here after you get out of the army. Black man. Even a cocky nigger like you could do better here than in America. I'd be saying the same thing if I had a place like yours. <laughs> hey. Mm. Oh, Mademoiselle Natalie. Bonsoir. Oh, bonsoir, James. Bonsoir. Mm -hmm. Hello. Have you envie de me voir? What did she say? She said, boy, if I'm not coming to see her. I say, who? Yeah, no, yeah. Merci. Merci. White people in America don't like cocky niggas, especially ones who are always going out with white ladies. And they're French ladies. Well, they won't be if you go back to America. Your countrymen only see black and white when it comes to people's colors. That's all they see. Well, as long as the ladies don't complain. Think on it, James. Think on it. Well, they want us down at the message center. What? All of us, now. Okay, okay. There are some documents missing from this office. There are two folders of classified documents missing from this office. I have searched this room and been through the files, and so has Sergeant Jelenko. They were on my desk yesterday, and I put them up, and now they're gone. Do you know what's going to happen if those documents aren't found? Do you? Those documents are very sensitive. Those are top secret documents. Top secret. I have to have them back. Do you understand? Have any of you seen them? Do any of you know what happened to them? Do you know what will happen if I have to call in the intelligence people? Do you? I want those documents. Were you on duty during the time the documents were reported missing? No. Could the documents have been misfiled? Yeah. Do you know what information the documents contained? No. Do you know who took the documents? No. You hear anything about what's going on? Uh, no more than you. I hear Stone's really sweating. <laughs> You working tonight? You know a way that I can get out of it. Well, that lie detector test was weird. What'd they ask you? The same as you, same as everybody. Did you take them? No. Did you see anybody take them? No. Did anybody come in the center who didn't belong? No. Did you take them? No. <laughs> That's the stuff, all right. <laughs> Thornwell. Tim Graham. 
outside. You don't work here anymore. You're the man in charge. You think you're a real badass, don't you, Thornwell? Well, I'm taking over for Lieutenant Stone. I don't want to see you in here. You're through. I told you what happens to cocky niggas. I'm glad to be out of there. <laughs> what are they going to do with you now? I don't know. Reassign me or something. Uh, that's their problem. My father always worried I was going to have trouble. He said I wasn't learning how to live in the white man's world. He's a man after my own heart. Oh. When I was a boy, I used to go into town looking for money. I'd find me a white man carrying something heavy, and I I'd tell him that I would carry it for him. If he said no, I'd walk along next to him, uh, talking away, trying to get him interested in something. And the next thing you know, he'd hand over whatever it was that he was carrying. I never asked for anything, but I always come away with a good piece of change. <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> Your father was right. I never could talk to my father. He was a hard man in that regard. I graduated high school. He took me for a walk through the fields by our house and told me that he was proud of me. He never said a thing like that to me before that day told me that him and my mama wanted me to be a lawyer or a doctor. Those are the only two things a black man can do and gain money and respect, he said. I told him that I didn't know that I wanted to be either of them, and he said that he understood. Then he uh, took me by the hand and uh, rubbed my skin real hard with, with his hand, and said, uh, there isn't much that lets a black man be accepted in this world, James. You remember that. You strive for what you believe in, but that will never rub off. Never. Hey, hmm? Thornwell. Hmm? Come on. I want to talk to you. I want to see the polygraph that you already gave me. Well, we can't do that. Uh, I want to see how it came out. You want to know how to read it? I'd figure it out. We can't let you see it. Well, I won't take another one unless I see it. Uh, what did it show? Did I lie? Well, tell me if I lied. Well, I know I didn't lie. The tester wasn't professional. We want you to take another one with the new tester. Well, I didn't lie, did I? It's not conclusive is the problem. Well, it showed that I d didn't take the documents. You have to take a new test. What is the matter with you guys? I didn't do anything. Take the test, Thornwell. Take it. It'll be all over, I promise you. You're from Spartanburg, South Carolina? That's right. You were born on August 30th, 1937? I was. Am I going to get to see this thing when it's over? I'll ask the questions. Am I? That's not up to me. Your father's name is Jesse, and your mother's name is Ruth. Is that correct? Is that correct about your mother and father? That's right. I, I want to see this test when it's over. Don't look at me. You look straight ahead and don't move. I'm not going to do anything for anybody unless I get to see this test. Is your name James Robert Thornwell? Yes. yes. I want you to answer yes or no from now on. Nothing else but yes or no. You're a clerk typist at the message center? I was, yes. You are a private, E2? 
Yes. You were recently reduced in rank? Yes. You're from Spartanburg, South Carolina? Yes. You attended one year of college? Yes. You've been informed that classified documents are missing from the message center? Yes. Did you see those documents on the night of March 15th? No. Did you see the documents on the morning of March 16th? No. Do you like Lieutenant Stone? She's a... Yes or no? No. Is the morale good at the message center? Yes. Do you get along with the others? Yes. Do you love your country? Sure. Yes. <clears throat> Do you like music? Yes. Is jazz your favorite music? Yes, it's the only kind. Did you take the documents? No. I'm a career man, Thornwell. A West Point man. I'm, uh, I'm an honorable man. Concept of country and honor resides strongly within me. I don't fool with people, and I don't lie to them. Uh, I run the intelligence operation here, and if I tell you something, that's the way it is. All I'm interested in is getting those documents back. They contain very sensitive material, and they're very important to the security of our country. I can't let them fall into the wrong hands, the communists. You know, Jane. I can't let that happen. They're our enemies, and I won't let that happen. And I won't allow you to stop me from getting them back. I didn't take them. You said you were going to cooperate. I am cooperating. But you're not telling us anything. Uh, I have nothing to tell you. You had it in for Lieutenant Stone. She got you busted. You took the documents to make her look bad, to get even. What, do you think I'm going through all of this for a lousy $82 a month? She rode you all the time. She picked on you. She made you look bad in front of the others. She wasn't ass. She wouldn't let up on you. Yeah, she was always uh, bowing and scraping to the white officers. She, she was wrong even when she was right. You hated her. I didn't hate her. I, I don't like her, but that's just between us. I didn't take the documents. All I want to know is what did you do with them? I did nothing with them. But you took them. <laughs> ah, a joke. You see, that's, that's your problem, Armando. You choke on depression. Give me one more chance, man. Never. <laughs> we have to take you down for more questions. We're not happy with what you've been telling us. We don't think it's right you enjoying yourself like this, Thornwell. This is very important, Thornwell. The security of your country is involved. You care about your country, don't you? Uh, don't you? We all care about our country. We're going to find those documents. What did you do with them? I used them to pay for a night with your sister. I'm going to find those documents if I have to pull every hair out of your ugly black body. Well, start pulling. I'll tell you what. For every hair that you get, I will give you back a document. Now, how's that? What's your family going to think about all this? Your family. What about your family? James? James? Hurry up, you'll be late for your graduation. What is all of the hollering about? <laughs> you know that it takes time to be the world's best looking man. <laughs> Come on, Bob, we, we are going to be late. James. I'm proud of you. I want you to know before we get there, I'm, I'm proud of you. <clears throat> James was voted most popular. 
Well, how does it feel to be most popular, James? You still speaking to us? <laughs> well, if he's the most popular, I'd hate to meet the others. You better stop teasing, James. He's too popular for that. Well, oh. the last year, most popular award went to Senator Bill Bowen. <laughs> some of your buddies from the message center are using you. You're the only Negro in the outfit. Tell us about Means. He was busted too. He's the type who'd go after revenge of some kind. What kind of man is Means? Ask me. Do you think he could have done it? Ask me. How do you get along with Armando? Ask Armando. He's been saying some bad things about you. Now, if we believed him, you'd be in a lot of trouble. How about Ketchum? How about sticking it? that kind of music. Nigger music. You have no choice. The CIC has jurisdiction. There's nothing you or I can do about They're it. They're violating my rights, uh, sir. They keep uh, giving me polygraph tests, but they won't show me the results. They won't tell me anything. They keep coming to get me and taking me down to their office. And they come when I'm sleeping, or when I'm eating, or when I'm peeing. Or, or th they won't tell. What's going on? Thornwell. Uh, they won't tell me anything. You're right to not being violated. You've consented to all those tests. Because they kept saying it would be the last time, but then they keep making excuses. Well, I'll tell you something. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm not doing anything anymore. You attacked those men upstairs. You hit them. There are officers in the United States Army. You could get stockade time if they pressed it. A lot of stockade time. But they don't want to press it. They just want you to cooperate. They just want to ask you some questions. Look, we know you were involved with someone else, and we're pretty sure we know who. Who? Well, we'd like you to tell us. That would square everything, and you'd be all right. I'm fine. In this would be all over. You know everyone that I know. The idea is for you to cooperate. I am cooperating. We've run the course with you, Thornwell. I'm disappointed. Me too. I'm real disappointed. You people can't be treated nice. Keep telling that to the captain, but he won't listen. He wouldn't until today. Today, he said, do what you have to. Stay put! Stay put! Now, we know you took those documents. We know you did it. Even with Lieutenant Stone, all we need to know is what you did with them. What'd you do with them, Thornwell? I used them to cover up your wife's face while we was doing it. Ooh, I'm gonna step on your legs. You know what'll happen when I do that? Yeah. You'll be a big, tall man, way up in the sky. And black bastard. Yeah, and your mother is the mammy. Your legs are gonna snap like sticks when I step on them. Well, then do it. Well, go ahead and do it. Come on, do it. What are you waiting for? What's the matter? Can't you get it up off of the floor? Come on, well, why don't you get your friends to help you? Come on, help him. Help him. Help him climb up on my legs. All of you, why don't you all dance on my legs? Come on, dance on this nigga's legs. Come on. I got the rest of the stuff outside. Oh, you're doing a real good job, James. No. Real good. <laughs> For an amateur. <laughs> Come on, let's go. How'd it go with the lawyer? Well, I'm still waiting. Yeah, we spent a lot of our lives waiting. Okay, watch the doorway there now. Here we go. Well, you're gonna have a real nice little place here when it's all done. 
live. This is your place, Raymond. Nah, nah, I live upstairs. Downstairs is yours. Well, I don't know when you're getting the rent. I told you to forget about that. You'll be working after a while. You know that I don't keep jobs. Now look, when you find one you like, you'll keep it. I never have kept one job. Not since the army. You see, I wanted to be an engineer. I wanted to build. Because, uh, well, all of my life, I, I, I have uh, pointed myself towards doing something substantial all of my life. It was in me. I worked hard for it. And, uh, It was the most important thing in my life. And now... I can't even keep a lousy job. I can't even keep a lousy job. What has happened to my dream? Well, oh, this is uh, just fact that I'm telling you, Raymond. Just uh, fact, nothing more than that. I don't want you to get stuck. This is your place to stay until you don't want to anymore. It's a real nice piece of work here. Real nice piece of work. What are they after, James? Nothing I have. Who does Stormwell hang around with? They wanted to know. Who are his women? Does he know any French people? I said, I don't know. Uh, I said he comes in here sometimes, but I don't know him too well. They said I was holding back and that they would make it hard for me. Well, the hell with them. They're asking us all questions. We're not supposed to talk about it, but they were. Means took it hard and started crying a lot. They're leaving him alone now. Leaving all of us alone. I don't know. They're still asking you questions? Some of the guys don't want to be seen with you anymore. They're coming around telling stories about you, and some of the guys don't like what they're hearing. They're saying you're talking, talking about all of us and saying bad things. I, I don't know why they're picking on you. They ought to leave you alone and let you go back to work. Nobody knows where those papers are. None of us took them, that's for sure. Well, what the hell reason would any of us have? You just hanging around now? I won a speaking contest once. My speech was what democracy means to me. I've stuttered since I was a boy, but I had never stuttered once while giving that speech, not once, in front of all those people. In Washington, D.C. For the 4 H. I, I was very active in the 4 H. Yeah. I won a medal for making that speech. Going well. We know you've had a bad time with James. I don't approve of that. We went to Captain Busher and told him so. I said it was counterproductive with a man like you. Thornwell is too bright and too substantial a man to be dealt with that way. We told the captain we wanted to spend some time with you. You know, just to talk, just, uh, just so we could all get to know each other. I want us to be forthcoming with each other. We'll be honest with you, James. And we expect the same. I can't be any more truthful with you than I'm being right now. Our purpose is to make it possible for you to trust us, so that when you feel ready, you'll confide in us what's in your heart, 
and what's in your mind. century French Renaissance movement. Martyr de la Pensée, martyr for his thoughts, convicted of heresy and executed August 3rd, 1546. You like this place, James? fond of good food. I think while we have the chance, we'll try as many places as we can. You have to take advantage of these things while they last. <laughs> Did you ever think you'd find yourself in France, James? Well, I didn't know. Coming from a, a background like mine and all, I always wanted to see other places, but I was never sure that I ever would. That's the wonderful thing about our country. The opportunities are endless. Anyone can escape their background. You can travel, do things other people just dream about. Hey, James, you uh, got time for a cup of coffee? You know, James, I, I find it hard to believe all this. In the past few days, I've come to realize what a remarkable man you are, what a remarkable mind you have. I don't understand how you could do something like take those documents. Think about what that'll do to your family. Think about what that'll do to our people. Our people, James. We've made so much progress. And now for a thing like this to happen. Judith Elizabeth Saunders. The next graduate is a young man who has been a great source of satisfaction and pride to Forster Grove High School and to me personally. He graduates with honors and is this year's winner of the Spartanburg County Foundation's College Scholarship, James Robert Thornwell. set back by what you've done. Think about the progress we've made with Dr. King. We've come so far. And now this. The white newspapers will print it. The white people will read it, and they'll love it. They'll love it that a black man is a traitor, James. We don't want to prosecute you. We don't want it in the newspaper. All we want is the documents. You might even wind up a euro if you help us get them back. I'm just a poor black farm boy from the South. It's possible. I give you my word. It's possible. Anything is possible these days. 
You mean like General Westmoreland? Well, he went to Spartanburg High. I, I went there for a while. Uh, we were raised in the same county. You took the documents, James. Just tell me how. That would be a beginning. I drop off some sandwiches that night to the guys on the night shift. You know, uh, Armando means. I, I brought them the food. We sat down. We shot the bull for a while. Now, you see, that's what you do with white boys. You shoot the bull. You see, so there I was, shooting the bull with the boys. And uh, I walk over to the file cabinet. I open the drawer. I take the documents. I put them under my arm while we're still talking. And I walk out without anyone seeing me. Now, isn't that magic? I mean, isn't that fantastic? I mean, isn't that really just fantastic? What I did. What's this for? The police aren't supposed to give me tickets. Damn it. I'm gonna go down there and take care of this right now. C'est une affaire qu'on se nomme la si si. Oui, tournoi, tournoi, votre tournoi, il obéira aux lois françaises. The French police know about you, James. They're saying the document you took concerns NATO and French military forces, and they say they have jurisdiction over you. Tournoi, 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 il obéira aux lois françaises. Get him out of here. Come on, let's go. Tell them, tell them. Get him out of here. Come on, Frank, tell them that I didn't, I didn't take anything. I apologize for what happened today, James. I wouldn't have gone down there if I'd known they wanted you. Why haven't they tried to arrest me before today? Well, I suppose the fact that you're in the American Army. Though they put the soldiers in their prisons before. I think what happened today had to do with seeing you in their station. They figured they had you. It's uh, probably not safe for you to leave the base anymore. Not without protection. We really can't keep them away from you forever. Not if they really want you. And I'm afraid they really want you. Good wine, James. Try it. Yeah, I really don't see how we can do much more. I don't know what else there is to do. We tried to be your friend. We've done our best. I uh, think you owe us something for that, James. I've extended myself. I put myself in an awkward position. But I don't care. I'll do whatever I can to help you. It's been two weeks now. We've used up our time. The others want him back for questioning. We have to give him back. I'm sorry, James. But we did the best we could. I took them. That's what you want to hear, isn't it? I took the documents. In that first five weeks, there was no formal charge against James. He told them what he thought they wanted to hear because he wanted them to stop. He was sure his confession would be the end of it. That's what they'd promised. When he got out of the army, James had changed. From a promising young man, he'd become a misfit. He was unable to carry on the most basic of social interactions. He wanted to know why. He needed to know so he could put his life in order. 
He started that search in Miami, Florida, where he went to live when the army was done with him. He went to lawyers. One of them tried to help. How many lawyers have you been to see before me? Three, four, maybe. They all told you that you could sue the army. They all wanted money up front to do it for you. And some of them were Negro, and they still wanted money. Hmm. There's nobody who won't take advantage of you if they get a chance. Nobody. You would have lost your money, James. You can't sue the army. You just can't. Now, I've done everything that I can. I sent for your records. I asked for full particulars. They said there are no particulars. There's nothing in your records to indicate that anything you told me is true. They did something to me. I didn't say they didn't. I said that there is nothing in your records to support it. I signed the confessions you wanted. You told me that would be the end of it. We have no problem with the confession. Then it's over. Well, not the part of it that deals with your admitting you took the documents. That part of it's fine. It's what you said you did with them. I burned the documents, I told you. That's the problem, James. We did some tests. There's no way that you could test anything, no way. Some of the documents were found. We tested those. Where did you find them? We did some chemical tests. The documents weren't burnt. For sure, they weren't burnt. Where did you find them? They were wet, James. Now, how do you suppose they got wet? Come on, Thornwell. Come on, Thornwell, you can tell us. Come on, Thornwell, come on. What did you do, with them? I, I, I threw, you do them, with I threw them in the river. River? What river? Uh, what? Uh, what river? Uh, Loire. How'd you do that? Well, how? Uh, how did you do it? I, I just threw them in. From where? where? Uh, where? where? You heard the question. I, I threw them off of a bridge. Damn you, Thornwell. The jar sank. Uh, tried it a half a dozen times, and it doesn't work. We put together two folders of material, the same weight and everything as the documents, and threw them off the bridge. The currents just don't take them to where the fragments were found. Not even close. It just doesn't work. You think he passed them on? I have no idea why he won't tell me what he did with them. Well, if he passed them on, he wouldn't. There doesn't seem to be any connection with any agents or foreign nationals. Somebody we don't know about. We're going to have to find out, of course. I have a couple of ideas. Well, you go ahead with whatever you think will work. He's a tough bastard. But we're pushing pretty good. How far do you think this is going to have to go? Oh, it'll be over soon. feel drowsy almost immediately, but just take things easy. Everything's going to be all right, huh? You're quite comfortable now, James. Now, I want you to count backwards with me, starting with 10. 10. 10. 9. 9. 8. 8. 7. You keep telling the stories and they don't work out. Maybe there's a reason for that. Your unwillingness to be truthful about what you did with the documents leads me to believe the worst of you, and I don't want that. Maybe... I don't want to believe you'd sell out your country. But maybe I didn't take the documents. What would tempt you to become involved with another country, James? Is it money? <laughs> because I can do as well as anyone in that regard. I mean, if it's a matter of price, I can do very well by you. A million dollars? Yes. Yeah. If it came to that, I could arrange it. Why don't you think about that? You'd have the money, you'd be free. Because let's face it, James, you're in the driver's seat. You took the documents, you're the only one who knows where they are. 
What if I didn't take the documents? How are you going to feel no, you if you already. find out yes, that's the truth? I, I was over. promised that I could go home You're if I confessed. You're a great man, James. Come on. I didn't take the documents. All right, are we going to talk price? Are we going to send me home? Right, I'd like to. I'd like to forget all about this. That's what they said. When I confess, they work for you. What is the difference? Who says it? All right, James. Now, you've got to understand my problem, all right? The pieces have got to fit together. All the pieces have got to go together, or else it's no good. All you got to do is tell us what you did with the documents. It's the only way I can help you. You said, James, let us hypnotize you, because what you say in a trance will be the truth, and we'll believe it. What did I say in the trance? Did I tell you that I took them? Did I tell you where they were? The trance wasn't deep enough. You said, James, let us give you sodium pentothal, because when you go under that deep, you can only tell the truth. Well, now, did I tell you that I took them when I was under the sodium pentothal? Did I tell you or where they were? I have to have the documents. Mm, well, I didn't take them. I will have the documents. I will have those documents. I will have the documents. How are you feeling, James? We've tried to be considerate in how we're going about this. Don't you think we've been considerate? I think you'll agree we have. We're aware of how difficult this is for you. But it'll be over soon. You'll confide in us. We'll protect you. Everything will be all right. <laughs> You're a good man, James. Even though this has been a difficult time for all of us, I've enjoyed being with you. Now, once you again, Thornwell. Mm. No, I'm not going. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, look, I'm not going anywhere. Do this any way that you want to, but I'm not going anywhere. Any way that makes you happy, but I'm not going anywhere. You're getting right on the edge, mister. One more time, Thornwell, the documents. None of your stories work out, though. No, no, your time's running out around here. I don't want you, Thornwell. French police, James. The ambush is off us now. Get him out of here. Now, come on. Let's go. What? What? We gotta get you out. Come on. What's happening? You know a woman named Susan? Yes. She's a medical friend of yours? Yes. She's pregnant? Yes. They say she's helped you. I knows where the documents no. are. No, no, they're, they're crazy. They're going to use a knife finally to get the what? truth. What? No. You don't want that blood on your hands, James. You don't want that. What is that? Come on. Come on. They're going to search the building for you. Oh, get him out of here. No. Come on. Now, this is getting hey, too far. Crazy. No. We've checked it out, and it doesn't work. Just like everything else you've told us, James. I told you I gave them to a friend. We talked to your friend. We've been to his apartment, checked witnesses. Not possible. Not at all possible. Think it over, James. Take your time and think it over, and think it over carefully. We're not going to accept any more of your fanciful stories. The next thing you tell us must be the truth. It must be, or our responsibility for your well-being has ended. Messing with my old lady, huh? What are you talking I'm about? I'm gonna kill you, man. I'm not I'm going to kill you, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> You're supposed to be, you're supposed to be my friend, man. I am, Williams, I am. And you're talking about it. No. Talking about how good it is. No. Talking about how much fun you have it. Wait until I leave the house. Whoever told so you, you can, that? So you can run in and play, huh? They're a liar. They're a damn, damn liar. No, I can't, man. Believe me. I can't. You did the right thing, James. Believe me. You did. Agreeing to protective custody. That's the only way we can be sure you're all right. 
I don't know what Williams had in mind, <laughs> but he's not the only one. A couple of your buddies think you're trying to lay it off on them. A couple of them think you're a communist. They don't like that. French police want you. I think, I really, I think this is the best way. You'll be safe, we'll be able to wrap the whole thing up, and we'll all be over. It's time to do that now, James. It's time to wrap it all up. The thing is, and I'm ashamed of it, Army wouldn't go for it. You said I was going to be in a hotel. Well, they said they couldn't allocate the funds. And I went to the wall with them, but... <laughs> They just don't have the money. You said that I'd be in a hotel and that I could call it off at any time that I wanted. No, it's not that bad, James. Our offices are right downstairs. It'll make a hell of a lot easier for us to talk. I'm sorry about the hotel thing, but there's nothing I could do. It was a part of the deal. Yeah, well... <clears throat> It's all right, James. You'll be safer, I promise you. <laughs> Sorry about the lock. I don't have enough men to guard you. On that day in October, when James came to me, he spent his time as he usually did. He rode his bicycle. He walked. He spent most of it alone. He tried to live differently in Miami after the army. He tried to be with people. He tried to work. He got married. What in the hell do you mean? You've been shopping. You've got all day to shop. Uh, I want you home. You're supposed to be home when I get home. I was at Mama's. Well, I don't... I, you, I want you home. Uh, I, I want you home when I get home. I want you home, Catherine. Home. I'm sorry. I've been acting bad. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do anything that hurts you. You've been awful. Well, I, 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 I don't know what comes over me. It, it, it just happens. I don't mean it. But you do it. Well. Trying. I want it to be good. I love you. I love you too. Well, there's a baby in there. Not for much longer. Oh, well, let me see. Hello. Let me talk. To... Hello. Hello in there. <laughs> it's time for you to come out of there. What's what? Oh, what's that you say? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, whoever is in there says that they'll be out when they are damn good and ready and not before. <laughs>
That's the last time you use our wastebasket for a toilet, Thornwell. You hear me? The last time. Let me go to the bathroom when I have to. I don't have enough people to escort you around whenever you feel like it. And then I'll use the wastebasket. No more wastebasket. I use the floor. You scum. Scum. They'd let me, I'd break your bones. <laughs> Do things to you you'd feel every day for the rest of your life. Me anyway, I don't care anymore. They can't do much to me. They probably won't do anything. Probably just go down as an accident. You listen to me, you black bastard. I'd kill you if I could. too long. Nine weeks. Nine weeks. If it was just you and me, I, I could do something. But there are people from Washington involved now. There are people high up in the government. There are generals involved now. It's gone beyond what it was even a few weeks ago. It's hard for me to help you now. Oh, oh but I'm trying. I'm talking to people. I'm seeing people. I, I'm doing what I can. Keep yourself together. I'll get something going for you. Don't worry. James? My name's Sanborn. I came by to see if you'd like to get out for a while, get some fresh air. I'll come by for you tomorrow morning. It'll be good for you to get away from here for a while. How many confessions have you signed? Uh, four, uh, five, uh, six, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> they push too hard, too hard. They want too much, James. When do you think all this will stop? <laughs> hey, hey, James. 
You know, I'd stop them if I could. James, do you believe in fate? I do. The twists and turns our lives take depend so much on time and place. Who we encounter and under what circumstances. You were born black. That's fate. <laughs> certainly wasn't your fault. You certainly wouldn't be in this situation if you'd been born white. Think about it. What if you'd been born into a nice, white, middle-class family in Boston? Or Seattle? Hmm? Traeger wants to help you, James. He came to me about it, and I said it could be looked into. It's dangerous, but he wants to try. Trust him, James. When the time comes, trust him. Mm. right there. Faster! If they catch us, I don't think I can do anything to save you. I believe they're gonna kill you. French police have given us time to talk, but they won't be put off for long. We'll have to give you back. This is France, and they want you. And there is no longer anything we can do to prevent that. They're brutal people when they want something. You've read history enough to know the sort of techniques they use to extract information. We don't want that for you. Mr. Traeger especially doesn't want that for you. He wants to smuggle you out of the country. He's willing to risk his job, his life if need be, to do that. I've come to help make it possible. The problem is that we'll be committing a crime against the French government. 
We could end up in jail. We could end up in a worse situation than you're in now. I have to be sure that you're not some sort of agent before we help you. I have to be sure you don't have any contacts that could get us all into trouble. I have to be sure if we get you out that you won't come back somehow. I have to know, James. Did you take the documents? No. <sighs> Do you have the documents? You should turn them over to me. We'll make sure that way they don't fall into the wrong hands. I don't have the documents. Where did you put them? I haven't put them any place, sir. Yes, you have. Tell me where the documents are. <laughs> I don't know, man. Where are they? You have the documents. <laughs> Tell me where the documents are. <sighs> We're going to sit right here until you tell me where the documents are. Uh, where are they? Uh, I don't know where. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> where are the documents? Uh, tell me where the documents are. James. Tell us where the documents are. I didn't take. Your mother is ill. We know that. We know you're making her worse. She's going to die because of what you did. Because you won't help us. Your mother's death will be your responsibility. You're killing your mother. Killing your mother. <laughs> you think you're going crazy. We've done that to you intentionally. Uh. It's terrible, isn't it, James? The way you feel right now is a nightmare. A terrible nightmare which will never end if you don't help us. We can make it permanent. We can fix it so you'll feel the same way you do now for the rest of your life. The rest of your life. We will make it permanent. If you don't tell us where the documents are. You don't want to be like this for the rest of your life, do you, James? You don't want to be crazy for the rest of your life. <laughs> yes, sir. I understand my rights. What is your rank? I cannot disclose my rank other than I am a special agent. This is the fifth agent that has refused to answer that question. It will be noted for the record. After the old mill, the army held James in France. They had all those confessions he'd signed to stop the interrogations, but they'd never found the documents. The army decided after several months to conduct a hearing to see if James should be court-martialed. 
Do you recall an occasion in late April when you, Thornwell, and Agent Carson were all in the same office as the French CIC? Anything related to the French is an operational matter, and I cannot discuss it further. It was only a few months ago. Certainly you can recall the French police saying they'd get Thornwell and he'd be sorry. I can make no statements concerning the French police. It is an operational matter. Did the French police ever interview a woman in your office? I invoke my early statement. Anything having to do with the French police is an operational matter. Do you remember telling Thornwell that the blood of this woman would be on his hands? Anything involving the French police is an operational matter. Do you remember Thornwell being taken from the Region 3 office to the old mill in early June? I'm sorry, but any reference to the old mill is an operational matter, and it cannot be discussed. When he left the Region 3 office, was he blindfolded? I don't know. Was he handcuffed? I don't know. What did you see happen to Thornwell after he left the Regents for the office? I cannot answer any questions relating to that incident. It is an operational matter involving the security of the United States. You know what they're doing, James. They're stonewalling. It's their word against yours. You know what your word is worth in a circumstance like this? They're lying. I can't prove it. They're lying. If you could tell me more, give me details, names, places, dates, I could do something. Uh, I told you about the old mill. I didn't remember that at first. Maybe I'll remember more. James, you barely remember going there. It's not enough. It was June, a few months ago. You have to be able to remember more. I remember Traeger being there. I remember the smell. Terrible smell. Well... What's going to happen to me? This is a pre-trial hearing. They'll either drop it when we're done here. Or they'll court-martial you. What? For stealing those documents. I didn't take them. They have a signed confession. They haven't got any evidence. They haven't got a single bit of evidence to support the charges. You know why I signed all those confessions? They're worthless. They have a body of opinion. The opinion of a group of white officers presenting a signed confession. And a very narrow view of what happened to you. The court wants to. They'll go along with that body of opinion. Do you recall challenging Thornwell to fight you? I never challenged Stonewall to fight me at any time. Specifically? That you asked other agents to leave the room and thereafter did challenge Thornwell to fight you? On that occasion, I was threatened by Thornwell. How did he threaten you? By his gestures and actions. Well, you didn't threaten him? No. He threatened you? Yes. Do you recall awakening Thornwell between the hours of 5 and 6 one morning while he was in protective custody? I do recall such an incident, and I do not feel at liberty to discuss this further, consider it an operational matter. This was the beginning of a 24-hour grilling period of Thornwell by CIC agents. I cannot answer that question because it's an operational matter. He was grilled by all agents in your unit and agents working in Paris for two-hour periods. This is an operational matter. After two agents completed their stint, they were replaced by two other agents. I determined that an operational matter. This interrogation continued over a period of several days. It's an operational matter. Was Thornwell either physically maltreated or under any duress during the time he was in protective custody? In my opinion, to my knowledge, no, sir. Do you recall Thornwell being placed under protective custody? Yes. Why? At his request. Are you positive that Thornwell requested to be placed under protective custody? I'm positive only that he signed a statement requesting to be placed in protective custody. What does protective custody consist of? As far as I'm concerned, it's to ensure that no harm came to Thornwell. You were responsible for him while he was in protective custody? Yes, sir. I want to ask you about the old mill. That's an operational matter. Can't be discussed. What date was the old mill ride? Eight carried over to nine June, but that's the limit of my discussion of that interview. What type of physical force was used on Thornwell out at the old mill? As far as I'm concerned, there was no 
physical force used against Thornwell? There's information being withheld to enhance the position of the counterintelligence corps. No, sir. Is it being withheld to protect the position of the CIC? No, sir. This is James Thornwell. Is Harvey in? Oh, well, where did he go? Well, uh, when we come back. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, did the mail come? Well, why is it late today? Well, did Harvey call the post office? No. Well, um, when did you say he'd be back? Tell him that I called. Please tell him, yes. When James's marriage broke up in Miami, he moved to California. He tried many jobs. He was a galvanizer. He sold perfume. He raised money for a mission. He was a stock clerk. He was never able to work for more than a few months at a time. He tried many times to go back to school. He married again and had a son. He and his second wife split up. James' the son became the most important thing in his life. Oh. <laughs> How are you feeling? Good. Good? How good? Again. You're the goodest that there is. Kick. That's good, you see? His psychologist, Dr. Paul S.D. Berg, says that prior to the Army, James did not suffer from any mental disease or defect. That he was a young man who was highly motivated, an above average student who wanted very much to succeed that he went into the army believing that the experience would help him realize his goals. Dr. Berg depicts James today as a man who's missing things. Memories, interests, ambition, enthusiasm, feelings. He sees James as a man whose mental tapes have been erased. Dr. Berg isn't sure any of these things can be restored to him. You don't think I'm crazy, do you? I'm supposed to be finding out some information t t today. Maybe tomorrow. Pretty soon. See, there was this old mill. I'm glad you don't think that I'm crazy. That's Your, your lawyer's been calling. He, he said your papers came. He said you should come right away. It's all in there, James. That day they took you to the old mill, they, they gave you a drug. A special purpose army team came in and tested it on you. Well, it was LSD. Oh, they called it EA-1729, but... Uh, it was nothing more than LSD. 
They put it in a glass of water. They took you to the old mill. And they tried to break you. They tried to destroy you. And they wanted what they wanted. They didn't care what happened to you. On December 5, 1980, the United States Congress awarded James Thornwell $625,000 as compensation for what the Army did to him. Today, he is in the process of trying to rebuild his life. 